Oh, <laughs> wow, uh, M.A. Greenstein. Since this has been specifically focused on visual with depth of field, could a next step also be accounting for correlate to other dimensions of allocentric perception? Uh, moving spaces related to the sense of um, either body, body image or even haptic. There's been some interesting studies about the haptic dimension related to movement just particularly because you're dealing with depth of field, uh, uh, wondering about where you could see that going. Well, I mean, one thing in the, in the little two-minute trailer, I don't know if you noticed, there was a point where, um, just to test if we had the image locked to the screen, Peter set up a motion which was very in free space. And to me, it was incredible to see how the image not only slowed down or sped up as it was changing its relationship to horizon, but also how, not, I wouldn't say I was dizzy, but I was a little bit off balance. And I think the, you know, one of the ambitions we have, which a little bit UCLA health and safety precluded us doing instantly. I mean, when Bench filed with health and safety and said we're doing a neuroscience and architecture experiment, I think their response was something like, is it open skull or something like that? <laughs> kind of, <laughs> we had the whole university, <laughs> uh, um, you know, student reps all on us. Anyway, but we wanted to put people on carts and start to move, you know, a person as well as moving the screen. And, and I think, that's really part of this is what happens when images are moving around. But I also think it helps us get some insight into the whole proprioception of how people move around in spaces. But to do it in a measurable way. I mean, everything we've been doing, you got to be able to measure it because this is a little bit of a scientific undertaking. So um, you can't have people roaming around. You got to put them on something where you can re reproduce how the motion goes in different ways. So. I mean, I think for us, because that is where we live in the relationship between um, moving people in relation to moving space that, are, that is both mediated and, and uh, kind of environmental, um, I think that the, the really exciting thing here is that we are developing a completely new language for how that works. We're really interested in how uh, that entirely virtual space might correlate directly in the real world or, or might not. But the idea of measurement when we are continually in a measurable situation, every person moving in relation to the, to the virtual environment in the, in the VR helmet is being measured to millimeter accuracy all the time in everything they do and there's great possibilities for haptic um, interaction at the same time. So yeah, I mean, I think, I think this, this notion of building measurement on top of measurement is really, really interesting. So, um to get down to brass tacks, suppose I was designing an airport or a shopping mall. Is there something I should do differently based on this kind of information? Okay. Or, or where are we headed with that kind of thing? Um, you may control the social dynamics in a large space. You could address different groups in the space with different visual messages from the same surface by taking advantage of the fact that the same, uh, the same uh, Surface could contain details, uh, moving pictures at different scales. So in the, imagine an airport where when you're next to this panel, you could see the flight schedule. In the mid-range, 20 meters away, you see some ad. And on the other end of the hall, you would see just one line saying uh, something, some urgent message or something like that. So you could divide space to partitions where different groups of people would receive different visual messages. It's just one possibility. And, and also, I think, if you're going to have an escalator or you're going to have people moving in a predictable path with this setup, and we do it with our students all the time, you can build a big model and put it on two robots and either have the model move over you or you can put a camera on one and see what that motion is like, which 10 years ago, you would just have to poke your head and move your head or something like that. You can also 
put images on it, and I think what's most interesting is we could take some of the information and findings we found and put it as an overlay into that software that we're driving all of that with. And I mean, I, the reason we can move this stuff around so easily is because there's an overlay of limits and information that gives us pre-visual information. So we can just, it's in the tools already. So as much as we could take some of the science and put it into our design tools, we're going to give you different kinds of airports. You know, it, without that, it's very tough for us because, like everybody said, we don't do much post occupancy measurement and testing. Another question in the back? Um, I, Mike's coming. Mike. Okay. Um, I was just thinking that um, I'm a technologist, a mathematician, I'm not a neuroscientist or an architect. But um, the technology right now is moving towards sensors and um, devices that are other than the phone, you know, wearable devices and so on. And um, we can actually have very, very cheap sensors that are, make the physical world actually communicate um, instead of just having like a phone booth, which just you make a phone call, it's actually communicating. And so I'm thinking if you guys are, have thought about that, and because I think what you're doing is amazing, because there's a lot of people that have criticism of devices and privacy and so on. But if you're actually sending the message to the people where they actually want to hear it, it's going to sort of go over it. Like it's not something that they don't, they don't want. It actually, they want to welcome it. And so I think you can actually change the way people think about messaging with using technology in addition to what you're doing. So you, you construct physical, in a physical sense, static um, buildings that are actually not, not, we're not, they're communicating with the people around it and sort of they understand what's happening around it and based on that, create the messages. And so I would love to be able to talk to you about this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I think we're actually exactly 15 minutes behind schedule, and it's, I think we should move on at this point. I want to thank again these gentlemen for the presentation and for the work that they've done over the past year.